Why is your mom running for office? Why do you think? You want to help out. You're seeing people get put down for stupid reasons, and you think that that's not okay. So you're running to help solve that. And to have some nice excitement. So <laughs> <laughs> something. Every time you come here, do you think, I hope I, I work sort here? I of like stop here and look at it and kind of try to take it in. The things that happen here and the impact that they have on people, it just makes me like stop. I feel very much like at home, but also super inspired by it. For the past few years, nonprofit founder Brittany Wallish has been advocating and testifying for bills as a Wyoming citizen. Now she's campaigning for a state Senate seat in the hopes of writing those bills. Brittany says she's running because when she sits in the gallery, she doesn't see herself or many of her peers represented. And not just because she's a Democrat in a conservative state. There's a lot of men in the Senate, so many so that like the two women that I can see from where I'm sitting right now, they just really stand out, don't yeah. they? And they look very much at home here. Yeah, and they are. They're brilliant in their own right. But it is an obvious imbalance. I mean, your representation should reflect your population our women have not fared well in this legislative session. If elected, Brittany hopes to fight for a wide range of causes. As the founder of an animal rescue, she cares deeply about animal welfare issues and the nonprofit sector. She pledges to fight for public school funding, and she wants to close Wyoming's gender wage gap, which is among the largest in the nation. We shouldn't be surprised by the sound of a woman's voice in the legislature. In Wyoming, 15% of the state legislators are women, making it the third worst state in terms of female representation. It's a statistic that undermines the motto of the so-called equality state, where 150 years ago, Wyoming's territorial government became the first in the nation to permanently grant women the right to vote and hold office, a full 50 years before the passage of the 19th Amendment the state is honoring the historic milestone. And Wyoming's 14 female lawmakers have been at the forefront of the celebration. It was 1869 where down the street the territorial legislature met and that's where the actual vote happened. And so when Wyoming became a state in 1890, there was debate in Washington, D.C. about whether or not Wyoming could come in with its guaranteed suffrage for women. And I believe one representative in the House said, oh, it'd be anarchy if we let women vote. We can't do it. The Wyoming sent a telegram back saying we would rather stay out of the union 100 years than to come in without our women. And so those words and that sentiment was echoed really very, very much in this room that we're sitting in today. This room, known as the Historic Territorial House Chamber, is where Wyoming representatives enshrined women's suffrage in the state's constitution, becoming the first state to do so. We always like to say, they didn't receive the right, we had the right. The right was recognized, I think is important to, to say, um, that our participation was recognized by the, the men who were signing the bill. While the motives for passing the suffrage bill were mixed and tainted by racism and political antics, the equal rights sentiment prevailed. And Wyoming proudly claims having the first female justice of the peace, the first female juror, the first female bailiff, and the first female governor. In the 1980s, Wyoming was among the state legislatures leading the nation in female representation. Then the numbers started to shift after Wyoming transitioned from multi-member districts, where voters choose multiple people to represent them, to single-member districts, where voters select just one representative. I took my daughter to watch the Senate debate. At the time, there was only one woman serving, and she looked in the chamber and she didn't see any women serving. And so she asked, can girls be in there? And I said, of course, there's one. And she had just announced she was retiring. And so just this notion that what if, you know, she's replaced by a man, there might be no women in that chamber. Thank goodness she asked me that question. Wyoming women made small gains in recent years, but they say the structure of the legislature is still tilted against them. 
The legislature was set up in order to accommodate the schedules, honestly, of the men who lived here at that time. 150 years ago, we had a ranch economy. We still have that same schedule today. I think it has been years since we have had a woman who has lived outside of Cheyenne with both Afi and Sue live in Cheyenne here, who has had children, school-aged mm -hmm. children or younger. Wyomingites outside of Cheyenne must endure long drives in winter conditions in order to serve. So many end up staying in hotels, which can be expensive and especially challenging for mothers of young children. It's a citizen legislature, and lawmakers are only paid a $150 a day salary and up to $109 per diem when they're working. There's no child care at the Capitol, and the hours can be grueling. It's a grind. It's a grind, and who can do that? You honestly see an awful lot of older, retired men. It's the same people who were here that 100 plus years ago. One question I get that I almost guarantee they never get is, who watches your kids when you're doing this? Is your husband a good babysitter? And um, you know, when I get those, those questions, it makes my skin crawl. My husband doesn't babysit our children. He's raising our children. He's like the we father, both do. right. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there are definitely differences. In Wyoming, women have outnumbered men in terms of voter participation. But that has not translated to a significant increase in female representation. To try and change that, these lawmakers co-chaired an event in February down the road from the Capitol called Leap Into Leadership which was founded by their former colleague, Rosie Berger, more than a decade ago. With Leap Into Leadership, when I envisioned what it would look like, it was about bringing you to Cheyenne to experience your government. First, you need to know what it is you're running for or why you would want to be involved in your government. So you need to come and be comfortable and you need to have access. The two-day event offers women like Brittany a chance to learn from others who have run for office. One thing you have to know about social media, voters are on Facebook, pundits and press are on Twitter. So organize your posts accordingly. There's no shortage of advice, and panelists also offer a candid assessment of life on the campaign trail. I probably deal more with imposter syndrome, like thinking that I'm not um, the person for this or like I need to be asked to do things. Now I thought I was a wonder woman, I could do it all, and, and truly I was wrong. If you take nothing else away from this event today, make it this, do not wait to be asked. Brittany first attended LEAP a few years ago and said the event helped demystify the process of running for office. As she has returned over the years, LEAP has helped her build a network and she has looked to Rosie for advice. They're, they're gonna talk about you. Everybody's gonna talk about you, win or lose. And that's why you need other people also defraying some of the negativity from Facebook and various other places. You are a Republican. Yes. Brittany is a Democrat. Right. Why are you a Republican helping a Democrat? Because I want common sense, capable individuals who love their state to represent our people and to get the work done. And Brittany brings another perspective to the table. She brings a young perspective to the table. I saw the numbers reduce for both the minority party and for women mm -hmm. in particular. And that's not healthy for an institution. After a day of speakers, networking, and panels, the event brings attendees and prominent politicians together for cocktails and dinner. Cynthia Lummis has run and won 13 times and she credits the old multi-member district rules for her first victory more than 40 years ago. She most recently served as Wyoming's sole representative in the U.S. House, a position that has been held by women for more than two decades. Now she's running to be Wyoming's first female senator. Are enough women running for office? There are never enough women running for office, here and elsewhere. You know, John Boehner, who was speaker when I was in the Congress, mm -hmm. used to say, if women don't run, women can't win. And I know it sounds self-evident, right. but a lot of times they want to be asked. And I would say, don't wait to be asked. Just do it. Just do it. This is Wyoming. This is how you solve the problem. Giant beer. Powerful women.
It took you roughly six years to yeah. decide to jump in. Uh huh. Why so right. long? I was still developing my business. Uh, I went back to graduate school, and also like I was kind of afraid to do it. How do you measure the success of a program like Leap? It's very difficult. Let's say one tenth of the group that probably will run. Mm -hmm. We have another probably 20 to 30 people, let's say, that will help on a campaign and do some part to make it effective. I knew that we were not going to change those numbers overnight. Why is something like Leap so special? Why do you take the time to be a co-chair? Because we believe in the importance of female rep representation. All voices need to be at the table. I think an overarching theme is that women really need a network. They really need to be empowered by other women. This program, I think, is one of those ways in which you can connect women who have been successful or have been through that process, and it really starts to create that social network. I know that it's going to be an uphill battle, and I know that most of the time it's not going to be a win, but a win is possible, and that is enough to keep me going.